Arabana Elder Kevin Buttercott and Combat Wombat Dizzy Brown are putting a call out for people to join the Desert Liberation Front and converge at the gates of BHP Billiton's Olympic Dam Uranium Mine at Roxby Downs from July 14. The music and arts festival The Lizard's Revenge is what is planned to draw them there. But who is this lizard and why is it seeking revenge? Izzy explains. The Dreamtime story about Roxby Downs in that area, there is a big lizard sleeping under there and where they're mining is right into that lizard's body and so that's why we're calling the festival the lizard's revenge because I don't think that sleepy lizard will be sleeping so much now with all that stuff going on and so hopefully if we can get enough people out there we will be able to blockade the mine hopefully stop them working and draw enough attention like through the world through the media and everywhere uh, for people to see what's going on out in the middle of the desert. What is the history of resistance against this mine? Um, Roxby Downs uranium mine in South Australia um, started in the 80s and, I, and back then there was huge resistance to it. People came from all over Australia, there was massive protests on the site where Roxby Downs was built. Um, Western mining were very conniving in the way they used uh, native title to obtain access to the land, um, often illegally and against the permission of Arabana people while funding other tribes' native title claim for land that wasn't theirs. The resistance to um, Roxby Downs uranium mine has been ongoing, I guess, for over 20 years now. There's been um, a bit of a lapse, but with the recent announcement of the expansion to make it the world's largest open-cut uranium mine, there's, um, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about getting back in there and trying to stop that stuff before it gets it uncontrollably big. Why do you think this is an important issue? From the very start, the mining is not only a violation of human rights for land rights for Indigenous people, it's also incredibly dangerous. Dealing with uranium, you're talking about a toxic substance that can stay radioactive and dangerous for up to 250,000 years. The tailings waste left over from the mine in the Olympic Dam creates a massive area of toxic liquid that is seeping down through the soil into the Great Artesian Basin, which is the water source for that area. Um, and once it leaves the mine, the transportation is dangerous. There was recently uh, a, was it a truck or a train came off and spilled radioactive uh, copper into the Catherine River. So all along the whole chain of the nuclear industry there is danger and once it leaves our shores it heads all over the world and if you look at the disaster in Fukushima and other reactor meltdowns, you look at the use of nuclear weapons, you look at the use of um, depleted uranium in bombs, in um, bullets, in Kosovo, in Iraq, the damage is exponential, like it just doesn't stop, it's killing people from the word go to like a never ending, I don't know, something. <laughs> Izzy first met Uncle Kevin at the Aboriginal Tent Embassy in the year 2000, and he invited her out to visit Arabana Country, which is south of Lake Eyre, and where the bore fields are located to extract the 32 million litres of water a day, which the mine uses. It was also simultaneous to me meeting a few people from Europe, um, from Mutual Waste Co Company, and they decided to organise a festival in Australia, a touring festival of artists, musicians, um, people that just create mad things and bring them over to Australia and across the desert. So we combined forces and with the Earth Dream Tour that happened in 2000, we managed to mobilise a lot of people from all over Australia and the world to come out to the desert. Our first stop was Beverly Uranium Mine, where we were invited to come in solidarity with the Indigenous people from that area uh, to, to protest against that uranium mine. We all got the crap beaten out of us and um, lots of crazy stuff happened, but I think that kind of brought everybody together to realise, uh, I guess, what we were up against. From there we went to Lake Eyre and down to Roxby Downs where we managed to blockade the road for three days with big sound systems and cabaret shows and um, all sorts of fabulous and wild activities. And through that, I guess, the Earth Dream movement um, also developed a sense of, I guess, the connection with the earth and trying to protect that as well as the art and music side of the tour. 
so it's pretty exciting and it's happening again um, this year and hopefully we can mobilize a lot of people to come out to the desert uh, through this and through the festival that we're organizing out there. Because a lot of these um, a lot of these projects, these mining projects, are happening in places where there's not many people live. It is out of sight, out of mind for all the people in the city that are, I guess, consumed by all the things people in the city are consumed by. The idea of a big hole out in the middle of the desert probably seems quite irrelevant to their lives. But if you consider the fact that we are one big living organism and radiation is is not discriminatory it doesn't matter who you are where you're from how much money you've got where you live that radiation can travel and it can affect you and even though you can't see it it's a re it's a real and it's a real threat with mass media and the control of the media and i guess like the like in suburban city life people aren't aware of what's happening to our natural environment and it may look like there's nobody out in the desert, but there is. There is living culture out there. There is Aboriginal culture that, unfortunately, in, in the city and in the East Coast has been ex incredibly damaged by genocide, by colonialisation. And a few places where you can actually still find amazing, strong, living remnants of culture is out in the desert and out in places that are less seen by, you know, the rest of society. And it's those places that are even more important to protect because of that living culture and also because of that land that we're going to need, not just for mining, but for everything. A camp will be set up a week prior to the lizard's revenge for people to gather, inform themselves about the issues, experience the beauty of the desert and most of all get creative. This camp will be north of Roxby at Albury Creek Station on the Unadada track. For more information and to find out how to get involved, email izzybrown at live.com. <laughs>